Here I am at it again. No more Mr. Nice Guy. Uh, but I'm going to still try and keep this beginner friendly. More so command line friendly. And now we are on episode 5. And today I'm going to cover a few additional uh, useful commands that you can use before we start getting on to the more hands-on uh, technical stuff. I'm going to be covering some material that I've covered previously on the Cup of Linux show, but just for completeness, it needs to be part of this series as well. So I'm going to be uh, covering some of those things. One of the commands I gave you in the very beginning was the man command that you could use uh, in the terminal to get a manual on just about anything there is there, but there are additional commands that you can use uh, which will help you get more information. And um, so I figured I'd talk about those in today's episode. So uh, here I am um, in my terminal. Let's go ahead and uh, log in here. And um, this may look... A I, I'm ex doing a little bit of experimenting with a new uh, filming rig. Um, prior in the past, I had my screen set up in a different place, and that required me uh, having um, an external keyboard plugged in and that sort of thing. Hopefully, this will uh, smooth things out a little bit better. At least it's making it easier for me to read the content that's on the screen because uh, my vision's starting to go crappy. Can anybody say midlife crisis here? All right, so let me go ahead and log into our session here. And uh, why don't we go ahead and uh, clear the screen or press Control L, and then uh, we can begin. All right, one of the new commands uh, that uh, we have available to us, if we want more information on some of the commands that we have learned, we can actually use the term info. So that's I-N-F-O, and then uh, maybe we want to uh, pick a command like uh, PWD, which we uh, covered in the previous exercises and now you're going to see here that we have uh, more information on the print work directory command okay and it also gives you some examples that you can use as well and if you keep pushing the down arrow it's going to go all the way uh, from the top to the bottom and then it's going to uh, basically uh, loop the document uh, so pressing Q will let you quit that okay um, so, you can use info against most of the commands. Uh, info, ls, okay, and you can see now we have more information. Nothing like a good interrogation on your system to learn as much as you possibly can, because uh, at the end of the day, all of the documentation that you need for learning how to use Linux and using the command line is built right into your Linux distribution. Many of you weren't even aware that you had all this documentation readily available to you. So this is all powerful stuff here. Okay, maybe you want to know where a certain executable is installed. Well, we can uh, use the which command. And we'll just type in which ls. Okay, it tells us where that command is located. So any system commands that you have in the system, you would be able to use the uh, which with. Okay, maybe you need help on a particular command that is installed in your system. There are two ways to invoke this because uh, one way doesn't always work. Let's try help ls, okay? And um, you get this weird little line of information. So if we try try and type in ls hyphen hyphen help, okay. Now you got a help file here, and that we can scroll up and pay, that we can uh, look through here, and maybe uh, using page up and page down. There we go. We can scroll up and down here with shift, page up and page down, okay to read the information that has previously scrolled. Okay, my bad. <laughs> Moving right along. Maybe, um, so in any, at any rate, if we want a man help on the manual, we can pull that up 
and then using shift page up, we can scroll through that document there. Shift page up and shift page down. Okay. All right. Now, something else that we can do, and this is something that I've covered in um, a few episodes on Cup of Linux, is the use of aliases. And aliases are your friend because let's say you have a long string of commands that you want to um, be able to, you know, execute. Uh, let me give you an example. Uh, I covered type a moment ago. If I do this type ls, you're going to see here that it's telling me that ls is aliased to ls hyphen hyphen color equals auto. <gasps> So that's where all the color information is coming from. Well, where do we find, define where those aliases are? Well, in your home directory, there's an interesting little file called .bashrc. Let's have a look at it. Nano. Okay, and you're going to see here, there are a number of uh, little things in here. For instance, uh, in my bash RC, I have a command here for screen fetch, which uh, is a program that uh, has that uh, that fancy M with all the information that you saw on the screen. Okay, all right, and then there's some commands here on rules for uh, setting custom colors. Now, I haven't made any alterations to this bash RC file. This is the one that came with Manjaro, with the exception of adding uh, screen fetch to this document. That's the only change I've made here. So if you did a fresh installation of Manjaro and uh, you open up your bash RC file, this is the contents you're going to see here. Now, if you built um, your distribution from scratch, say you uh, installed uh, Arch Linux or uh, Gen2, you would need to make this file yourself. And this would have a number of things in here. For instance, all right, you're going to see here that we have an alias um, for list. Okay, and it's saying uh, color and then auto. Okay, you also have um, grep, which we will discuss at a later time. When you execute that command, it looks like there is auto coloring in here too. Now, a lot of Linux distributions include these uh, aliases to make things aesthetically pleasing, but it's also helpful when you have uh, color codes uh, applied to all the information displayed in the terminal. Try opening up a DOS prompt in Windows, and there isn't any color or anything to it, and you pretty much have to know what you're looking for. Whereas, uh, throughout this course, I've run commands, and then maybe different things were highlighted different colors, so it makes things easier to spot. So this is quite convenient. So, um, with an why don't we add a new alias in here and do something fun? Let's uh, do alias, and I'm going to, um, well, before I do that, let me uh, control X. Um, I'm not going to save this right now, because first we need to determine if uh, the alias that we want is going to be available. So to find out, we use the command type again. And maybe the uh, alias I want to is just a shortcut for SW. So I'm going to do type SW, all right? And it's going to say that the type SW is not found. Excellent. That means we can use that as, um, as a uh, alias. But maybe I just want to call it test because we are testing. So if I do type test... It's saying test is a shell built-in. That means we can't use that as an alias, so we're probably going to have to go with SW. So why don't we go ahead and uh, invoke nano bash RC and to pull up a previous command, I just simply pressed the up arrow and I was able to cycle through those commands. That's how I did it.
Okay. All right. So now with the bash RC open here, let's go ahead and go back down to where the alias section of our document is. And we'll create a new line because we're going to add some commands. And interestingly, you can add more than one command to your aliases, as I'm going to show you here. You're going to see here in these quotations that uh, on, on these aliases, okay, there's one command per line, but I'm going to add three commands. That's right, Dirty Helga. Got you on this one today. All right, alias. And then I'm going to call this SW equals. Okay, and then uh, let's have fun. Uh, first, what we need to do is we need to put in a apostrophe. All right, and then, um, hmm, what do I want to do? Okay, the first command, why don't we uh, tell it to run an echo command? Echo. Okay, and um, in quotation marks, pay very close. The echo command can be very handy uh, as you're creating bash scripts because... Um, you can alert the user of your scripts to certain functions. Maybe the command didn't execute properly and it would alert the user by echo echoing some information or maybe the command completed successfully and then it would echo that the script is finished and you can close your terminal, whatever. That's So the echo command is very handy for that. All right, now maybe I want it to do something after um, echoing that pay very close attention. Okay, well, hmm... I want people to be able to read it before it decides to jump to the next command. So maybe I might want to use the sleep command. Okay. So I what I did was I dropped in a semicolon and then a space. Okay. So we'll go sleep two. Okay. And then we'll drop in another semicolon and a space. So it's going to sleep for two seconds. It's going to stop for two seconds before executing the next command. And then, hmm, what is the next command I want to do? We've we got to have fun with this because this is boring command line stuff, right? So, of course, we're going to have fun. So, um, let's uh, tell it to do telnet. Um, towel dot blanken lights dot nl. And then we will um, go ahead and we will um, place another apostrophe at the end. So we have three commands that are going to run when we use the alias SW. It's going to first say, pay very close attention. And then, for, and then it's going to sleep for two seconds. And then it's going to tell net into towel.blankenlights.nl. And some of you guys are going, what the? heck are you doing? All right, well, let's find out what this does, huh? So let's go ahead and uh, control X. Y to save it and then enter. And then we're done. All right, so now we can, well, why don't we go ahead and clear? Okay, and then uh, let's try our alias and see what happens. Okay, weird. It's saying um, command not found. Okay, I forgot. <laughs> this is what happens when I don't drink any coffee. All right, um, I didn't do anything wrong. I just need to log out and log back in for this to take effect or, or at least exit the terminal session and start a new one. Uh, my bad. I know Dirty Helga's probably having a nice little laugh at me for that one. All right, so why don't we go ahead and exit first. Okay, now that we're logged back in, let's clear. All right, and then let's uh, run our alias and see what happens. Okay, it's telling me to pay very close attention. All right, and then, oh, what's this? So it's left for the two seconds, and now it's executing a command. And then uh, it's got a little surprise for us. Um, and uh, as this is playing, I suppose I can go through the uh, the uh, wrap-up here. Um, 
<laughs> a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, it's Star Wars in the Terminal! How cool is that? <laughs> All right, if you find these useful, please considering visiting me at cupoflinux.com. And um, all the show notes for everything in this series is in the um, link below. I keep all of that on the Cup of Linux forum, all the information relevant to the series. Uh, if you find these tutorials to be useful, please consider um, hitting the donate button while you're there at cupoflinux.com. That helps me to keep the lights on at both cupoflinux.com and distrohunt.org. In our next episode... We're going to do some really cool stuff in the terminal. I just have to figure out a wicked way to present it because we're going to be doing some some redirection with some commands. We're going to uh, we're going to be running some commands that do some form of processing and a redirecting information that we input into an output. So um, with the redirection, that should be uh, something interesting for uh, many of you guys because we are taking our first step into writing little scripts or little programs that we can use. So that's good stuff uh, coming up indeed. All right. Um, I can't think of anything else to say other than um, if you want to continue watching this, I guess you're just going to have to uh, put in that command on the terminal yourself. Uh, in order to exit, you would uh, press uh, Control and then the right bracket and then type in Quit. And then that gets you out of the uh, Telnet session. Okay, uh, until next time, please be sure to take a little bit of your time and be excellent with someone today. Peace out. Mm -hmm.